Hi, I'm Dr. Mohan Thomas. It's another Wednesday, and today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects, which is aging. Actually, whatever I'm going to say right now, you know, is was inspired by Dr. Deepak Chopra. I was a much younger person when I first heard him in 1993 on an Oprah Winfrey show, which needless to say was a sellout, uh, because it was very, very, uh, new concept. I've studied the concept over the last two decades or so and I'm much smarter, wiser and so I want to share some of those thoughts with you. First of all, aging. I think aging in some ways is in your mind. I also think aging is a mistake. You could be 25 and feel 40 and be 40 and think 25. In the same way, you can have the body of a 60 year old, 60 year old, and feel like a 13 year old. So that I think is something that we have all recognized, and if you have not, you should, over the last few years. Now, happiness forms a very big part, and in this case, it is mental health. Mental health is equally important part of the general health and the aging process. Naturally, a happy man will age less and slower, than a sad man. Now we also know the aging mechanism. It is the telomeres, which is part of our genetic material, that's usually tall, like a wine glass, and shrinks down as time goes by. Now there are factors that can make them shrink faster or slower. And I think we're getting, we're trying to get a better understanding of what the telomeric activity is all about. Now my very simple talk to you is this, that you start off with your head, which is the thinking part of your body. You must meditate for a while. Meditate to however which way you want to do it. With chant, without chant, you know, I meditate every day for about 10 minutes. That's how my day, day begins. Then, the spirituality of it. I'm not a religious person, I'm a spiritual person. So you can reach out to your religious part or your spiritual part and spend some time doing connecting with that also. This is very important that your mind stay clean and you get rid of all the toxic thoughts, revenge, anger, being vicious, envious, all of these things you get out of your head. Okay. And I tell you, for all the things you should worry about in your life, money is the last thing you should worry about. And I tell you why. I've been dirt poor and I have worked my way up. I've had to, I've gone through ups and downs. And we're all going through a downtime. I mean, because for the, of the following reason, which is, you know, um, you know COVID, post-COVID, uh, economy down as usual. So all that will pass. So how do you go about, you know, stopping the aging process, reduce, slowing it down and being happy at the same time? Very simply by making a concerted effort to change your lifestyle. You will be what you eat. Too much of a good thing is a bad thing. Fruits are good. You eat too many, too many fruits or too much of it, it's a very simple sugar, fructose. It will be converted into thousands of calories. You eat half a watermelon, it's probably about 2,000 calories. One grape is about nine calories. So we keep that in mind. Drink lots of water, very important. Then the next thing you need to do is eat a balanced meal. I eat the following way. You know, you can eat any which way you want. I follow an intermittent fasting uh, diet where my first meal is at 2.30 or 1.30 to 2.30. Second meal is from 8.30. 9.30, somewhere in between. Now, you shouldn't adopt anything that I'm saying because all depends on comorbidities, or in simple English, whether you have other systemic diseases, hypertension, diabetes, please do not any do any of my diet, dietary um, exercises or dietary habits without checking with your own physician. I'm going to tell you that right from the beginning. What's good for the goose may not be good for the gander. You know? so. Again, coming back to food, I believe that carbohydrates, too much, sugars, 
corn flour, and dairy products, too much of it is probably not very healthy for you. Whether you decide to eat animal products or not, that's your personal choice. I'm a vegetarian, I'm loving it. You know, I don't have any problems with people eating whatever they want to eat. But remember that, you know, what you eat is what will make you down, down the line. And as far as the quantitative part of it, we discuss the quantitative part of diet. Now I'm going to talk about the quantitative part. You must eat like a king or a queen in the morning, like a prince or a princess in the afternoon, and like a pauper at night time. I have a Buddha's bowl. bowl. What I fill in it, in it is what I eat. Salads, soups, and you know, basically stir-fried vegetables. There are so many things you can have. Quinoa, which is not, a, it's a millet, but it is more of protein than, than uh, carbohydrates. You know, things with, uh, where glycemic indexes matter, such as rice, you must not if you to consume less of it, and certainly if you're a diabetic, then it's really bad for you, and uh, you may check your own nutritionist or dietitian, speak with them, and see what they think about it. I'm just speaking in general. I'm not an expert in this matter, but having read what I've read and practicing what I practice, I say rice is probably okay at night time, and um, I rather not okay at night time, but okay, you know, if you have it in the afternoon. You know, uh, if you're a rice eater, certain buses in this country are all made of rice eaters. So you need to change your diet a little bit. Moderation is the key. Then you come to what things like supplements. Should you take supplements? Well, to take it or not depends on you. I'll tell you what I do. I take supplements and supplements can vary from a male to a female. I'm not going to list the, a list of supplements that I take for fear that one of you might go and, and just ape me and get into some trouble. So you must seek professional help. You can come to me if you wish. You can go to your own doctors, see your nutritionist, dietitian, whoever you want to. What I am today is because of what I have practiced. Okay, I do believe in supplements. I think supplements are very, very important, especially if you have a skewed diet like I do. And I'm a vegetarian, there are some things I may not get. So, what else is important? Antioxidants. Very important. I think antioxidants give you a kind of a nuclear shield against negative radicals, which is what triggers things like cancer, uh, mitotic activity, which is the same thing as cancer, um, and other diseases, you know, which has a predisposition to being exposed to uh, negative radicals. So what else can I do? Drink lots of water. Very important. And I think inflammation is a good thing and a bad thing. Inflammation actually causes, causes repair. But chronic infections are not the best thing that there is. If we go back and look at the epidemiology of a lot of cancers, you're going to find out that they all started out with chronic conditions, which was not recognized. It went on, irritated the, the system to such a point where everything goes haywire and you end up with things like cancer. There are some genetic forms of it. We're not just getting genetic forms of it. And as needless to say, a good medical examination, both clinically and with blood work, is very important, you know, during the course of a year. Somewhere during this talk, you're going to get a chance to see the actual interview of Dr. Deepak Chopra with Oprah Winfrey. Keep in mind that all the material that you see here is copyrighted to the Oprah Winfrey Show. Thanks for watching and stay healthy mentally, physically, and sexually. Take care. You say that aging is a mistake. Well, you know, when I was researching this book, I found that we have some real misconceptions about the aging process. For example, almost everybody believes that aging is fatal but you look at the data and you'll find nobody really dies of old age. They die of diseases that accompany old age, which are largely preventable. 
everybody believes that aging is irreversible. Now, that's also a misconception because if you remove toxins from your body, if you learn to get the stress out of your life through meditation, if you change your environment, mm -hmm. and if you go to undergo certain procedures like increase antioxidants in your diet, you can actually reverse the biological markers of aging, like your hormone levels will reverse. There's a sex steroid called dehydroepiandrosterone sulfate. Lost and, me there. <laughs> DHEA mm -hmm. for short. And as people grow old, this sex steroid, it goes down, but you can actually reverse it through these procedures. You can change the blood pressure, you can improve your hearing, you can improve your eyesight. In short, all the things that we think go with the aging process are reversible. Most people think aging is normal, but what's normal? Perhaps we are confusing the normal with the psychopathology of the average, which is dull and uninteresting. I mean, there are people who are 25 and look 40 and behave like 40. There are people who are 60 and behave and have the biology of a person who's 30. And what we say is that was just they had good genes. No, but that's another misconception. We think that aging has a genetic component. And yet, that's only a very partially true statement. If your parents lived up to be more than 80 years, mm -hmm. it adds only three years to your life. But you can do things with your stress in the life, with the toxins in your environment, with your food, with your lifestyle, that can add 30 to 50 years, much more time to your life. And not only life to your years, but years to your life, both the quality and the quantity. And that you override the genes.